The BRICS 2024 summit, which concluded just a few weeks ago, has resulted in numerous significant agreements and initiatives among the member countries. One of the most prominent developments is a groundbreaking financial proposal, the creation of a unified depository and clearing system for the BRICS nations. This initiative could potentially transform international trade, enabling the BRICS countries to sidestep Western financial systems and transact independently within their own network. This development holds particular significance for the BRICS nations in light of the recent re-election of Donald Trump as the President of the United States. During his previous term, Trump had warned global leaders about the potential repercussions they could face for reducing their reliance on the US dollar. He had signaled that countries attempting to sidestep the dollar might face severe consequences, even hinting at the possibility of imposing tariffs or economic penalties as high as 100% on trade goods for BRICS nations. This stance has further amplified the BRICS country's motivation to explore alternative financial systems that provide greater economic sovereignty. The BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, recognize the need to create a financial infrastructure that shields them from the leveraging power of the United States through the dominant global role of the US dollar. The BRICS leaders understand that an independent financial system would allow their nations to mitigate the risks associated with shifts in US monetary policy and provide more resilient trade and investment channels that are less vulnerable to sudden changes in US policies or economic sanctions. This strategic push toward a de-dollarized financial ecosystem has gained further momentum given the protectionist tone of the Trump administration, which is likely to continue under his recent re-election. This development solidifies the BRICS bloc's commitment to achieving greater financial independence. To fully comprehend this initiative, it is essential to examine the motivations from both economic and geopolitical perspectives particularly by exploring the historical context of the U.S. wielding the dollar as a tool of power. The U.S. has long leveraged the dominance of the U.S. dollar, as the world's primary reserve currency, to exert economic influence and advance its foreign policy goals. This weaponization of the dollar involves using the currency's global primacy to impose economic sanctions and restrict access to international financial systems for targeted nations. The dollar's prominence was firmly established in the aftermath of World War II through the Bretton Woods Agreement, which pegged other currencies to the US dollar, convertible to gold. Even after the dissolution of the gold standard in 1971, the dollar has maintained its central role in global finance, enabling the US to exert significant influence over worldwide economic activities. The BRICS countries, particularly China and Russia, have long-standing concerns about the global over-reliance on the US dollar, which leaves their emerging economies vulnerable to financial restrictions or sanctions imposed by the West. This has motivated the BRICS to promote alternative payment systems and explore mechanisms to facilitate trade using their own national currencies, reducing dependence on Western financial intermediaries. By developing an independent financial framework, the BRICS seek to minimize their exposure to the leveraging power of the US dollar and the associated risks of sudden policy changes or economic sanctions from the United States. This strategic shift aligns with the BRICS' broader vision of a more balanced, multipolar global order that better represents the interests of emerging economies. The United States has a long history of leveraging the dominance of the US dollar to exert economic influence and achieve its foreign policy objectives. This strategy, often referred to as the weaponization of the dollar, involves utilizing the currency's global primacy to impose economic sanctions and restrict access to international financial systems for targeted nations. The prominence of the US dollar as the world's primary reserve currency was firmly established in the aftermath of World War II through the Bretton Woods Agreement of 1944. This accord created a global monetary system where currencies were pegged to the US dollar, which was convertible to gold at a rate of $35 per ounce. Even after the dissolution of the gold standard in 1971, the dollar maintained its central role in international trade and finance enabling the United States to exert significant influence over global economic activities. Prior to World War II, the British pound sterling had served as the world's leading reserve currency. 
However, the devastating effects of the war left European economies in shambles, while the United States emerged with a robust economy and substantial gold reserves. The Bretton Woods Conference, held in July 1944, aimed to create a stable international monetary system to prevent the economic turmoil experienced during the interwar period. The resulting agreement established fixed exchange rates, with other currencies pegged to the US dollar, which was convertible to gold. This system positioned the dollar as the central pillar of global finance. The United States' ability to leverage the dollar's dominance provides several advantages. The U.S. can finance its budget and trade deficits by issuing dollar-denominated debt, which is in high global demand. Additionally, the U.S. can exert significant influence over global economic activities through its monetary policy and the dollar's central role in international finance. Furthermore, the U.S. can impose economic sanctions and influence international financial transactions due to the dollar's overwhelming presence in global payments. The U.S. employs various mechanisms to wield the dollar as an economic tool, including economic sanctions, control over financial networks, and asset freezes. By restricting access to U.S.-dominated financial systems or freezing dollar-denominated assets, the U.S. can effectively isolate and cripple targeted economies. This historical context underscores the BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, motivation to establish an independent financial infrastructure that reduces their reliance on the U.S. dollar. The BRICS recognize the need to shield themselves from the leveraging power the United States can exercise through the dollar's dominant role in global trade and finance. An autonomous system would not only mitigate the risks associated with shifts in U.S. monetary policy but also provide more resilient trade and investment channels, less vulnerable to sudden policy changes or economic sanctions from the United States. As the BRICS nations seek to chart a course towards greater financial independence, their strategic push for a de-dollarized financial ecosystem has gained further momentum, particularly in the wake of the Trump administration's protectionist policies. This development underscores the BRICS commitment to achieving greater economic sovereignty and a more balanced, multipolar global order. By the late 1960s, the United States faced mounting inflation and balance of payments deficits, leading to concerns about its ability to maintain the dollar's convertibility to gold. In August 1971, President Richard Nixon announced the suspension of the dollar's convertibility into gold, effectively ending the Bretton Woods system. This Nixon shock marked the transition to a fiat currency system, where the dollar's value was no longer tied to a physical commodity but determined by market forces. Despite the end of the gold standard, the US dollar has remained the dominant currency in international trade and finance. As of 2023, the dollar accounted for approximately 59% of global foreign exchange reserves, underscoring its central role in global finance. The dollar's dominance provides several advantages to the United States. The US can finance its budget and trade deficits by issuing dollar-denominated debt, which is in high demand globally. Additionally, the US can exert significant influence over global economic activities through its monetary policy and the dollar's central role in international finance. Furthermore, the U.S. can impose economic sanctions and influence international financial transactions due to the dollar's dominance in global payments. The U.S. employs several mechanisms to wield the dollar as an economic tool, including 1. Economic sanctions. By leveraging the dollar's centrality in global finance, the U.S. can impose sanctions that restrict a nation's access to international markets. For instance, sanctions against Iran have severely limited its ability to engage in global trade, impacting its economy substantially. 2. Control over financial networks The U.S. has significant influence over international financial networks, such as the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication SWIFT. This control allows the U.S. to monitor and restrict financial transactions, effectively isolating target countries from the global financial system. Asset freezes, the U.S. can freeze assets held in dollars by foreign entities, limiting their financial operations. This tactic has been used against countries like Russia, where sanctions have included freezing assets and restricting access to financial markets. 
The BRICS country's interest in establishing a non-Western financial infrastructure stems from several key factors. Western sanctions, particularly those targeting Russia following its actions in Crimea in 2014 and Ukraine in 2022, have pushed BRICS countries to seek financial independence. When Russia faced economic restrictions, including disconnection from SWIFT and the freezing of assets in international systems like Euroclear, its ability to operate in global markets was significantly hampered. This scenario underscored the risks of relying on Western systems, motivating Russia and Iran, also affected by sanctions, to support an independent financial system for the BRICS. Moreover, major BRICS economies, especially China and Russia, have expressed long-standing concerns over the global reliance on the U.S. dollar, which dominates international trade. Current financial structures led by entities such as the IMF, the World Bank, and Western financial networks often leave emerging economies exposed to financial restrictions or sanctions imposed by the West. In response, BRICS countries have promoted alternative payment systems, such as China's cross-border interbank payment system, CIPS, which facilitates transactions in national currencies. The broader BRICS objective aligns with reducing dependence on Western-dominated financial routes. With their collective economic weight, BRICS nations represent over 40% of the global population and contribute about a quarter of global GDP. As they gain influence, there is an increasing push for mechanisms to facilitate trade within the bloc, conducting trade in national currencies and limiting reliance on Western financial intermediaries. A BRICS depository system could further streamline these transactions. The world is aggressively moving towards multipolarity, with power distributed among global and regional players. This shift has emboldened countries like China and Russia to contest the current Western-centric financial and governance structures. BRICS has championed reforms in international institutions such as the United Nations and IMF to better represent the interests of emerging economies. Building an independent financial framework aligns with this vision for a more balanced world order. The rapid development of financial technologies, such as blockchain and distributed ledger technology DLT, enables countries to create secure, decentralized financial systems. Russia's vision for a BRICS-wide depository based on DLT reflects this trend, as the technology provides a resilient, transparent, and decentralized framework for cross-border transactions. The BRICS initiative is also part of a broader strategy of South-South cooperation, where developing countries seek stronger ties outside of traditional Western networks. Together with other regional alliances like the Shanghai Cooperation Organization SCO, and the Belt and Road Initiative BRI, BRICS is working to deepen political and economic collaboration in the Global South. A core objective for BRICS nations, particularly China and Russia, is to lessen their reliance on the U.S. dollar. The dollar's global dominance allows the U.S. to exert significant economic pressure through sanctions, which BRICS aims to counter by promoting local currencies in trade and developing separate financial infrastructures. The proposed BRICS financial clearing system, dubbed BRICS Clear, is led by Russia. This system would serve as an alternative to platforms like Euroclear, allowing seamless cross-border securities transactions for BRICS members. Although details on the implementation of BRICS Clear remain under discussion, the system could potentially be built on DLT, leveraging its decentralized and secure nature. While complete integration of a BRICS-wide financial system poses technical, regulatory, and legal obstacles due to varying national standards, a partial integration could be achievable. A BRICS clearing system could potentially boost trade between member countries by an estimated 5% to 7%, though the exact outcomes would depend on the system's structure and adoption. In conclusion, the BRICS 2024 summit has birthed a groundbreaking financial proposal that could transform international trade and finance. The pursuit of a unified depository and clearing system, independent of Western financial structures, is a strategic move by the BRICS nations to assert their economic sovereignty and reduce their reliance on the U.S. dollar. This development holds particular significance in the context of the Trump administration's protectionist policies and the potential consequences for countries seeking to distance themselves from the American financial hegemony. 
As the BRICS countries continue to navigate the complexities of this initiative, the outcome could have far-reaching implications for the global financial landscape and the balance of power in the international economic order. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see this.